Hello everyone, I'm Landon Schlangen. Today we're taking a look at the quality assurance projects, more specifically the personal library. So to complete this project, we can either do the GitHub repo or the REPL project. I would rather do it locally, uh, though I can use my VS code and I'm more comfortable with that. If you're more comfortable with REPL, go ahead and try that, but I would rather do it locally. And to do it locally, we go to the GitHub repo and we clone the HBS part. And if you have Git installed, then you'll be able to clone it in. So you just do git clone, uh, git clone, and then you paste that in. And then it'll clone into whatever folder you're in. And here I have it right here, I think. Let me see if I expand this out. No, that's my issue tracker. Uh, the project library is right here. I can just change the name of it quickly to project library so that it doesn't have that a uh, weird boilerplate thing in front of there. I don't know. I always have to reload the window when I change a, a folder name for some reason. But yeah, there's the project library, and now I'm just going to open up that file or folder. Okay, for some reason, I actually named it project library instead of personal library. Let me change that quick. All right, there we go. Personal library. That's what I want. All right, so if we take a look at this project, we have our routes, api.js. This is where we're going to do most of our work. And they have a little bit of the stuff started, and it says like what the response format should be and that, and that sort of stuff. Um, but to get started, we have to connect to a database as well. So the database we're going to be connecting to is called MongoDB. So just look that up and log in. You should have an account at this point. I always log in with Google. All right, here we go. I'm now inside of my MongoDB atlas. And in order to connect, we can hit this connect button and go to drivers. We're using Node.js, so we first have to install MongoDB, and then we can use this uh, connection string to connect to it. Let me copy this, and let's npm install this. So we'll go npm, or actually just paste that in. npm install MongoDB at 4.1. Um, I also want to install Nodemon, because I don't believe Nodemon is installed. I also want to install Mongoose, which helps me uh, work with MongoDB easier. All right, now that we have all that stuff installed, let's go to package.json. And instead of just doing a start node server JS, I want to add a dev script, which will start the Nodemon server, Nodemon server.js. And this will just allow us to not have to restart the server every time we make a change. All right, we have this sample env right here. I need to create a, a regular .env file, and this is to hide our secrets. But let me copy over the sample env for now, and then the port will do 3000. And we won't be testing right now, but we will later. We need our db connection string. I'm just going to call it db, and then that MongoDB connection string that uh, is right here. We want to copy that and paste it in there. Okay, and then after the slash, this is your collection name. I'm going to call it personal personal library, like so. And then we also have to put in our password. In order to get your password, either you remember it, or you can just change it every time, like me. <laughs> I would go to database access and edit. And I edit my password and just auto-generate a secure password, copy it, update my user, and then I paste it in there. And I don't care if you guys see this because I'm going to change it anyways, like the next project I do. So yeah, so our connection string fully looks like this MongoDB with the with my name and then the password cluster, your cluster name, and then the collection name, personal library. All right. Let me save that. And then in order to use this, we're going to create a file called DB connection. JS. And then within here, we're going to require Mongoose. And Mongoose will connect for us because it's a lot easier to connect with Mongoose than with, with MongoDB. And just to show you what I mean, uh, here we just have to do mongoose.connect and it will connect. But with uh, MongoDB, uh, if I go back into that connection and hit connect and drivers and we see the full code sample this is what they want you to do but uh 
yeah, I make it very simple with just mongoose or yeah, mongoose.connect. Yeah, mongoose.connect. Okay, uh, in order to run this file, we have to require it inside of server.js. So just go into server.js and go require um, dot dot or dot slash db connection. It should show up. And there we go. Now that will run when we run our uh, when we run our server. To run our server, we can do npm run dev, and it'll start up our node mod server. And then if there's no errors after like five seconds, then it means it connected correctly, uh, which I think it did. So that's good. Okay, and then now we need our models. The models we need are for this uh, book object. So if we take a look at their project, I probably should have taken a look at their project first. Um, yeah, they test post to API slash books. And you can say like new book, do submit that, and then it'll give you an ID and a title. So a book has a title and an ID, and then you can put comments on it. So here we have new book two. We can click on that and add a comment like best ever. And add that comment, and you can see the comment show up right here. Uh, one book can have multiple comments, and that's kind of the relationship we're going for. So now we need to create a models file. Just go models.js. And even though we're just going to put one model in here, I'll still call it models. And the model we'll put in here is called book schema or book, book model. And all it has is a title that's required and comments, which is an array of strings. Yeah, it's actually very, very simple. And now we're pretty much all ready to work inside API.js and also make sure there's no errors, which there isn't. And we can open up our, our project at localhost 3000. And here's our project. I have it zoomed in so that it's easier to see, but yeah, we should be able to do the same thing, although we can't right now because we have to implement that. So the git function, in order to get everything, the post function in order to save data to the database and the delete function in order to the, to delete our data. All right, so let's first start with the post function. All right, for the post function, they start with a function requres. I like to modernize that and go uh, arrow function. It's the same thing, except uh, it's cooler looking, yes. Uh, and then we make sure it's async so that we can await our save because it takes time for the save function to complete. So in this post function, we take our title. Also, we have to import our model. So let me do that quick. Yeah, const book equals required dot dot slash model slash book. Um, I think that's actually wrong. I think it's just dot dot slash models and then I go dot book at the end. Yeah, like, like that. This is how it's supposed to be. Okay, and then now we can use our new book in here. Yeah, so we get the title. If there's no title, we're missing the required field title. Otherwise, we create a book that has no comments starting out. And then we save it, and we respond with the book ID and the book title, just like what they did. So now this one should work. If I have a book title in here, like uh, Landon first book, and we submit that. Here we get our ID back and our title, and we should be able to check in our database and see that data. Yeah, here we go. Personal library books, and we have Landon's first book with the same ID. So 654B, and you'll see 654B, same ID. Okay. And then it should show up down here as well, but it, I think it'll only show up when we do the git, uh, the git route. Let's do that now. All right, again, I'm going to take this git route and modernize it by doing async rec res and then an arrow function. This one, we wrap in a try catch block. I think we also did here. Yeah, try catch block if there's an error, there's an error saving. But also for the git route, we try and find all the books. And you do that with just an empty object there. If there's no books, then we respond with an empty array. Uh, otherwise, we want to format the data before we uh, send it back, and that's just so that we can have this comment count and like strip out some of the extra data that comes in regular books. 
So we respond with the ID, title, comments, and comment count. And so now we should be able to see what this looks like, I think. Let me refresh this. Okay, yeah, there we go. Landon's first book, zero comments. If I click on it, this gives me the ID. I can't uh, submit any comments yet, so let's work on that. Uh, let's actually work on deleting all books first because this button doesn't do anything right now. All right, the delete route, if successful, response will be complete delete uh, successful. And we do that right here. We say book.delete many, and that will delete all of them because there's no filter set in there. And then it'll send complete delete successful. Otherwise, if there's an error, then we just send an error. All right, that one's very simple. So now I should be able to delete my books, delete all books. And if I refresh, then it's gone. I don't know why it, Precode Camp's little project here doesn't automatically refresh, but I don't know, whatever, it's fine. All right, now we have the uh, comment stuff because this takes an ID of the book and we can grab the ID from the params. And basically if it's dot ID, it has to be the same as ID here and we'll get the book ID out of there. All right, let's get route. Um, we start with the book ID again. But this time we only find one book. We find by ID and then we pass on book ID. And we respond with our comments, ID, title, and comment count. Kind of the same thing as all books, except here we are only finding one with that specific ID. Otherwise, if we can't find it, then we say no book exists. All right, so now if I go back into my project and I first submit a book, back here's our book if i click on it then we can add a new comment but of course we can't add a comment yet because we didn't uh, add that functionality yet that would be a post function so that would be this one right here this will allow us to add a comment post function is probably the most complicated out of all the ones on here but it's overall i think it's still pretty simple we get the book id we get the comment from the rec.body if there's no comment missing required field Otherwise, we find the book by ID, so we just find the one book, and then we push on the comment and we save it, and then we can respond with our JSON. We make sure to await the save again, so that we make sure it's saved before we respond with any any concrete evidence that it saved correctly. All right, so now we should be able to add a comment, add this comment, and I think if I refresh, then yeah, two comments now. ASDF, ASDF, um, hello, add this comment. And I guess it adds it, but if I refresh, then it will format correctly. I don't know, Free Code Camp's project is so buggy. Now we now we have to work on the deleting just one book part. We can, of course, delete all books still, but we need to just delete this one book. In order to do that, we have to work in this dot delete function right here. And again, the delete function is fairly simple. Grab that book ID out of the rec.params, that param that comes from the route right here. And then we find by ID and delete. That's the mongoose function. And we pass in the book ID. Um, if nothing was deleted, then we throw no, no new error, no book exists. Otherwise, the delete was successful. Um, if we throw an error, it will automatically go down to the catch block and then it will respond with no book exists. Okay. So this, uh, this error, this could be anything but it will still respond with no book exists, okay? And now we should be able to delete our book. All right, so delete book. If I refresh, it'll be gone. Yeah, uh, it should be, Never mind. Refresh again. There we go. I guess it just took a little while for it to delete. Uh, yeah, it's just a little buggy, but yeah. Uh, now it should pass most of the tests on Free Code Camp. so let's try that. Go to personal library, this one. Solution link, local host. Of course, we need to submit a publicly visible app URL. That's where REPL comes in, but yeah, REPL is kind of slow too. Let's try completing this. It will run most of the tests. Of course, it won't pass all of them because we didn't do our own tests. Yeah, so right here, all 10 functional tests are required to complete and passing. That's what we have to work on now. So we can find our tests inside the test folder and then functional tests. And here they gave us an example and then all the tests that we have to do, they give us a title and 
that should be enough to like tell you what you need to do. So let's uh, let me just copy over what I have. All right, here we go. So these are my tests. Um, as for the first example test on git slash API slash books, I think I changed it a little bit. Well, maybe I didn't actually. I just needed a super long timeout. And the timeout I came up with was 10,000, which is just 10 seconds. But it's, you know, it's in milliseconds. So it'll be 10 seconds. And it, as long as you have a long enough timeout, it should eventually uh, complete correctly. All right, you add the timeout at the end of the at the end of the suite or at the end of the function or at the dot end function. You can do dot timeout, I guess. That's where it is. Actually, you can put timeout on like any part of this. So like even right here, I can do dot timeout. And you know, I just split it up. So yeah, this is the example test I gave. Here's uh, the first post test. Make sure it posts with the title. And then also to run these tests, uh, just go into your env file and uncomment the no env equals test portion. And then I, I have to restart my server. I can do control C and then press Y. And then I can do npm run dev again. And it will run my tests for me. Here you go. Here's our tests. Again, this first one always takes a while. There, it took two and a half seconds, but you can see it passes all of them. If you have any console logs in your project, they'll show up here as well. So yeah, that first one takes two and a half seconds, but the rest of them go really fast and they all complete correctly. Let's take a look at the rest of them here. All right, here we give it a title of test title, and then we make sure that test title is what's responded with. Here, no title given, it should be missing required field title. Here we give an array of books, but it, it or here we get API slash books and we make sure it's an array with uh, dot is array. Here we try an invalid ID and then we, we get no book exists. Here we get a, the right book ID and it should be test title. The way I got this book ID was by saving it right at the start when I do this post function. I make sure to set book ID with res.body.id. And I have a, a variable called let book ID up here. All right, make sure we can add a comment. So here we do test comment. We put in our book ID again, and it it does that correctly. Make sure the first comment is test comments. Now we add without require with without comment field, and it says required field comment missing. Invalid ID. No book exists. Here we try and delete with the book ID. Delete successful. Here we delete and the ID is not in the database. So here invalid ID, no book exists. And those are all of our tests. So now we can try this again on Recode Camp. I've completed the test and it should be all good. Okay, one of these is not working. The get request to API slash book. Oh, test timed out. Yeah, see, here we go. Test timed out again. Maybe if I try again. I don't know if it's like my internet is slow or what, but. You know, sometimes that happens. Then, yeah, here we go. Now it works fine. So yeah, if it test, test times out, let's try again. Um, if it still isn't working, then maybe there's something wrong. But in my case, there wasn't. And yeah, so that was my the whole personal library project in a nutshell. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and then leave a comment. I do read all the comments, and I try and get back to you within a reasonable amount of time. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. See you later. Bye.